Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel. I'm an airline pilot currently in the typewriting to an Airbus A330. And on this video featuring the Phoenix A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator, we are going to have a look at the emergency electric configuration. So, before we start, a very quick forward here. The A330 that I'm currently doing my rating on is a little bit different from the A320 in terms of how the emergency electrics work in that in the A320 the emergency generator is directly coupled to the ram air turbine and in the a330 it's working over the green hydraulic system so in the a330 they're indirectly coupled and the engine generators can cover it as well that may lead to a little bit of a difference in between everything we're going to see inside this video in that the a330 works a tiny bit different than the a320 however let's go ahead and go right into it the emergency electric configuration basically means that we have lost all AC power sources. So we don't have engine generators and we don't have the ABU generator. Now, you will think, well, this is rather unlikely to happen, is it? Well, yes and no. Of course it is very unlikely and losing all three AC generators is a really rare circumstance. However, there are situations in which this can happen without losing all the generators. For example, if you've got a short, a short circuit somewhere in the systems or if your airplane is filling with smoke from an electrical fire and you might want to go into emergency electric configuration voluntarily in order to shut off all the electric supplies to the different kinds of systems and only keep flying with the bare minimum. So, with all of that said, let's go right into it. I have armed the failure down here in the failures menu of the Fenix. So we go into config, manual failures, and then we've got the electrical system over here. And I set a delayed activation at a certain altitude where we are going to encounter the failure of the generators 1 and 2. Also, we are dispatching with the APU inoperatives today, so that will not be available. You know, if the peep hits the fan, then it's always going to happen for real. Okay, so we are ready to go. And a very quick final word before we take off. The emergency electric configuration is regarded as a complex failure by Airbus. And complex failure basically means that there will be a lot of different indications on the ECAM with inoperative systems and so on. For that reason, Airbus has created a summary procedure in the Quick Reference Handbook that basically outlines the most important things. Now, this is what the summary looks like, and we are going to make use of it today for the flight to help us better manage our flight. The good news is that even with the airplane in emergency electric configuration, an autopilot might be available, so it can take a little bit of workload away from us. All right. Parking brake released. Take off. Manflex 67, SS runway, auto thrust blue. Thrust set. One hundred knots checked. B one rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Autopilot one map. Okay, let's climb out, clean it up, and when we are clean, we are going to encounter the malfunction. That's just about going to make our life a little bit easier. Okay, acceleration altitude should be any moment now. Here it is. Thrust time, climb, auto thrust. First pack coming on. Come 
Come on, pitch down a bit. Why is it taking so long? Here we go, that's better. Slowly but steadily getting into the right direction. So I programmed the failure to occur at 4,000 feet, because by then we should be all cleaned up. Okay, flap zero. Speed checked. Flap zero. Alright, so the golden rules are always going to apply. So it's going to be fly, navigate, communicate. So the first thing... We are entering a turn, and the failure is about to happen now. Here we go. Okay, auto flight, autopilot off. Okay, thank you. Alright, so, I'm flying, let's level it off. Do note, we've got the thrust lock over there, that's what's causing the, um... Warning all the time now. Okay, perfect. So, Mayday, 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 Airbus 320. We lost all generators. Stand by. Okay, at that point, ATC would acknowledge the Mayday. Now, we've done the flying part of things. The airplane transitioned to alternate law, but you can see it's still flying rather alright. And now we are just about going to establish in a heading somewhere. I want to bring it onto a downwind heading, and when that is done, we are going to start our ECAM procedure. Most important thing, there is no rush. So, take all the time you need. Absolutely all the time you need. To fly the airplane first. Navigate, we are doing that. Communicate, we have done that. And please don't ask me why the airplane is rolling wings level slowly. It should not do that in alternate law. It should basically fly the same way as it would in normal law, just without the protections. But that is fine. Also, the QNH is blinking. That's also part of the fly the airplane. But we don't need to worry about that because we are actually going to maintain 5000, which happens to be the transition altitude. Okay, ECAM actions. Auto flight, autopilot off. Understood? Clear auto flight, clear auto flight. ELEC, MR config. Minimum red speed, 140 knots. Okay, we'll stay faster than that. Generator 1 and 2, off then on. So, ELEC, generator 1 and 2, off and on. Off. Give it 3 seconds to be able to actually restore properly. And on. And generator 2, off. 21, 22, 23, then on. Okay, if unsuccessful. Yep, that looks like it. Bus tie, off. ELEC, bus tie, off. So the first step was just to check if we could get a generator running. Now we are isolating the systems, and as you can see, generator 1 and 2, off then on, again. So now that we've isolated the system, we'll try again to see, can we recover it like that? So, generator 1, elect, gen 1, off, 21, 22, 23, then on. Come on, airplane. Okay, and generator 2, off, then on. Okay. As you can see, the airplane has not recovered. So, engine mode selector, ignition. Engine mode selector, ignition. VHF1, HF1, ATC1, use. And we're doing that. 
Fuel gravity feed. Procedure, gravity fuel feeding. So now we would go into the QRH and run the gravity fuel feed procedure. So unfortunately I couldn't find any document that's available open source that included this, so for that reason I need to just do it um, from my EFB. So gravity fuel feeding procedure. Engine mode selector ignition. Ignition. Avoid negative g-factor. Maximum flight level, gravity feed ceiling. So, let's see. Current flight level, if flight time above flight level 300 is greater than 30 minutes, it's not. Flight level 300 maximum, if flight time above level 300 is less than 30 minutes, well, we are still below that. Highest of flight level 150 or 7000 foot above takeoff airport if flight level 300 never exceeded. Okay, so that's our point. We are not going to climb above 7,000 feet above our takeoff airport. So 7,000 feet altitude is maximum. When reaching gravity feed ceiling, fuel cross feed off. Well, we, we aren't going to do that. And why does it say fuel cross feed off? Well, because the cross feed is normally going to open automatically when this failure happens. At least in the A330. Not 100% sure about the A320. I'm sure there will be some of you who know that better than I do. Okay, if no fuel leak and with one engine running fed by gravity. Okay, that is not the case at the moment. But let's read it for a quick moment. So for fuel, we can just hold the fuel button and it's going to show us the um, Ecom page up here. But as you can see, both engines are using the fuel likewise. So nothing to worry about. But let's read it for a short moment. If no fuel leak and with one engine running fed by gravity, fuel cross feed on, bank angle one degree down on the live engine side, rudder trim use. And when fuel imbalance reaches 1000 kilograms, bank angle two degrees wing down on the live engine side or three degrees down. And that is the gravity fuel feeding procedure. So let's continue with our ECOM then. Fuck one, off, then on. Okay, so. Flight controls. Fuck one, off, then on. Bus tie, auto. So. Elec, bus tie, auto. APU, if available, start. Now, as we said, we dispatched without the APU. So we are not going to have that available. Okay, clear ELEC, clear ELEC. Flight controls, alternate law, protection lost. Maximum speed, 320 knots. Clear flight controls, clear flight controls. Auto flight, auto thrust off. Okay, clear auto flight, clear auto flight. Air, engine one and two bleed fault. So that is now, failures that um, are caused because of the um, electrical malfunctions, but we might be able to restore some systems, so let's give it a try. Air, engine 1 and 2, bleed fault. Engine 1, bleed off, then on. So, air conditioning, engine 1, bleed, off, then on. Engine 2 bleed, off, then on. So, engine 2 bleed, off, then on. Now you might be wondering, we did not have a fault light in the engine bleed buttons. And you need to keep in mind that a lot of the lights on the overhead panel are not powered at the moment. So, if we do the annunciator light test... Okay, it looks like Phoenix doesn't model that. All the A320 does it different than the A330. In any case, that's what we've done. But, look at that, the ECAM procedure vanished. In other words, the reset was successful and our bleeds are now working again. Okay, land ASAP in red. And then we've got the fuel page. Now the fuel page is a little bit tricky over here. Because, as you can see, the lower ECAM is no longer available. But if you press and hold the button up here, then you can see... You can bring it up while you hold the button down. When you release it, it vanishes again. 
Okay, so on the fuel, the pumps are off. That's as expected. Clear fuel. Clear fuel. Okay, starters. Stop ECOM. So, let's take a little moment to think about. Is there anything we can do? Is there anything we could do to reset the system? Well, not really, because we have already done the generator resets. That was the first thing the ELEC MR procedure led us to do. And it was not successful. Okay, so... APU obviously would be an option, but as we assume that it is inoperative today, we are not going to do that. Alright, so let's start a left turn again in order to stay close by the airport. Alright, and then we can continue with the status page, please. So continue ECOM. Now this... Normally, the... FO would press and hold the status button to read all that. What you can do, however, is you can go to the ECAM and the transfer button and put that cap num 3 so that the um, pages can be viewed on the captain's ND. However, obviously that removes the nav display from view, so you just gotta apply a little bit of uh, judgment there if you need the nav display more or if you rather have the status page up there. Now, in the typewriting, what they teach is this. You use the status page up here. So that is what we are going to do in the video. Okay. And this is going to be a long one. So, status. Minimum red speed, 140 knots. Maximum speed, 320 knots. Maximum brake pressure, 1000 PSI. Fuel gravity feed, avoid negative G-forces. Okay. Approach procedure. For landing, use flaps 3. Approach speed, VRF plus 10 or 140 knots, that's for the rat. Landing distance procedure, apply. Alternate law, protections lost. When landing gear down, direct law. One pack only if wing NTI is on. Cabin zone at fixed temperature, slats and flaps slow. Okay, in op systems. Flight control protections, reverser 1 and 2, ADR 2 and 3, radio altimeter 1 and 2, spoilers 1, 2 and 5. ELEC 2, SEC 2 and 3, IR 2, auto callouts, standby static heater, I suppose, autopilot 1 and 2, auto thrust, CAT 2, left tank pumps, right tank pumps, nose wheel steering, engine 2 bleed. Okay, overflow. Let's remove the overflow, and the way we do that is by releasing the status button and then pressing it again within 2 seconds. So, release, press. Okay, and pack two. Remove stutters, remove stutters. Okay, so as you can see, that was really a lot of things that did not work. So, if you're able to memorize all of those and make the correct procedure out of them, then my respect. If you are like the average pilot like I am, then you will want to have a look into the summary. So. Let's have a look into the summary procedure from the QRH. And we've got that up here. ELEC EMA config summary. So this is like the most important thing for us to take into consideration. So let's read through that. Cruise, maximum speed 320, alternate law, protections lost. Only Captain Pito and AOA heated. Fuel, center tank, usable by gravity, two tons unusable. Fuel gravity feeding. Communications, VHF-1, HF-1, ATC-1, RMP-1 only. Navigation, ILS-1, VOR-1, GPS-1, if MMR installed only. For landing performance assessment, use the performance application of the electronic flight bag. Approach, CAT-2 inner, minimum red speed 140 knots. Slats, flaps, slow. For landing, use flaps 3. When landing gear down, use man pitch trim in direct law. Landing, flare. Only two spoilers per wing. Direct law. Spoilers, only two per wing. No reverser. Braking, alternate, without anti-skid. Maximum brake pressure, 1000 PSI. No nose wheel steering. Go around. When landing gear up locked, alternate law, protections lost. Okay, so that's the summary. That's quite a bit easier, isn't it? Than having to read the entire thing on the status page and make up your own stuff. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and start our approach preparation. We are going to fly, 
to return to um, Toulouse. So a new destination, LFBO. Insert and then. Arrival is going to be an ILS approach, runway 3 to right. And we need no star and no via. Thank you. Direct to center fix, radial in. Looks good. Insert. Oh, we don't have flight director. I don't need to pull that, but anyway. Okay. So, performance page. This is going to be a flap free landing. Let's go ahead and activate the approach phase. QNH is 1020. Temperature. Let's see. 21 and the wind 290 at 16. Alright, and finally we need a chart, so we need a minimum. Let's quickly go ahead and grab that as well. Or not, if the Navigraph charts don't work, okay. Well, field elevation is somewhere around 500, so let's make the minimum 750. Just a quick and dirty guess, but well. Config 3. And then we can select that up here as well. Okay, perfect. So, that is our preparation in the FMS basically complete. So let's go ahead and start setting up for the approach itself. Now, for those of you flying the A330 or A340, there is an important step in here on the Emma Alex summary that you need to be aware of. And that is that you have the land recovery button on the Emma Alex power panel. And the land recovery button is basically going to do the following. In the long haul airbuses, the slat flap control computer is not going to be powered if you're in the emergency electric configuration. And for that reason, you, however, have electricity available for the autopilot. So that's something, at least, isn't it? However, you don't have sufficient power for all of them. So what you are going to do in the long haul airbuses is that you are going to press the land recovery button when you start the approach and that is going to remove power from the autopilot and instead going to power the slat flap control computer so that you can actually extend your flaps. In the A320 that's a bit different so I just about wanted to mention it at this point anyway. Okay let's go into the approach then. So the slats and flaps are slow. For landing use flap 3 and when landing it down use man pitch trip. Okay so let's go ahead Descent 3,000 feet. And then we can start our flap extension. So let's turn right heading... Make that 240. as you can see plane flies pretty much perfectly doesn't it and the um, QH summary procedure makes it really easy to handle the fault after all so that's always something to keep in mind you have the QRH summary for the emergency electric configuration and for the dual hydraulic failures and it is a really really helpful tool okay let's turn heading 270 Fly ourselves somewhere towards the center fix. And when we're level in 3000 feet, we are going to start extending our flaps. Okay. So 
So, leveling off in 3000, flaps 1. Speed checked, flaps 1. So we're about to establish on round about a 10 nautical mile final. I'm going to take the airplane rather slow on the approach because we want to feel how the airplane is going to react. Flaps 2. Speed checked. Flaps 2. So we want to get a good feeling of how the airplane is going to fly when we are in direct law. For that reason, I'm not rushing the approach. We're like 15 miles out, extending the flaps. Going to extend the landing gear once we're established on the final. So we will intercept the ILS in flaps 2 and then take the landing gear once we're established on the final. And that should make up for an easy approach. I want to keep the airplane in alternate law until we have actually established on the glide slope. So once we're on the glide, we'll go gear down, flap 3. Because I want to minimize the need to trim the airplane on the final. And that is exactly what we are going to run into when we ultimately extend the landing gear. In the real airplane, trimming it out in direct law is really easy. But in simulator I find it a little bit um, a little bit not so easy. Okay then. Make a right hand turn heading 290 to intercept the ILS. Localizer alive. Let's turn final. Okay, set so runway track, 322. Okay, established on the final. Then let's go gear down. Let's go for Okay, now you can see the used man pitch trim on the PFD, which means we're in direct law. And we get it on the ECAM as well. Flight controls, direct law, protection lost, man pitch trim use. Okay, clear flight controls, clear flight controls. Right, then flaps 3, speed check, flap 3, anticipate the trim demand. And then just trim it out. Alright, and here we are. So, now we've got a nice 8 mile final once we intercept the glide slope. And as soon as we're established on the glide, we can go ahead and take our summary out once more so that we can check what's going to be important for the landing. Okay. So let's have a look into the landing summary. Flare, only two spoilers per wing, direct law. Spoilers, only two per wing. No reverse. Braking, alternate without anti-skid. Maximum brake pressure, 1000 psi. No no field steering. Alright, so the big threat that we have on the landing now obviously is going to be the brake pressure, maximum 1000 psi, because we do not have because we do not have anti-skid so we will kind of have to fly the approach like that or at least after landing and then we'll have to carefully apply braking manually 
so that on the triple brake indicator on the lower right here we only get 1000 psi of brake pressure otherwise we might burst some tires all right and with that our procedures are basically complete and now we are just going to fly the airplane like a conventional airplane the flight in direct law really isn't much of a problem i know that some flight simmers tend to struggle with it but you don't need to worry about that at all it reacts a little bit more direct to your inputs than when the uh, flight computers are on but that's really all there is to it. Okay, nicely established. Very good. Check. Minimum. Continue. Okay, so no radio altimeter call outs. The PM would call them out for us now. But we just about have to do it ourselves in the sim. Okay, touchdown. So now we've got to check the triple brake indicator. Here we go. That's 1000 PSI. And we've got to hold that. So oh, reversers not available as you can see. And now we are below the minimum red speed and you can see how we are losing a lot more electronics. But just notice how long it takes to stop the airplane. You look at that. And you can see we, we need almost the entire runway. Okay, and here we are. We don't have nose wheel steering, so this is where the session ends and where the tuck would now take over. So that is about it. That's the emergency electric configuration in the A320. Now, if you're an A320 pilot and you have some comments of what I could do better on this one, then you are very welcome to post those. As mentioned, I'm currently doing the rating on the A330 and things are a little bit different. There were a couple things in here which surprised me as well a bit, that the A320 is so different from the A330, but then again, you are usually within closer proximity to um, alternate airports, so... Well, that's it. Okay, so, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Leave a like if you liked the video, leave a comment to let me know about it and what you think. And finally, if you're up for more, then be sure to press that subscribe button to the channel. I would like to thank you very much for joining, hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, then I am looking forward to your feedback. If you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again on the next one.